No, I'm not a writer. Okay. I just got these wheels on the car. They're looking pretty, pretty good. Probably gonna just raise it up a little bit in the back. Cleaned all the windows because they were filthy. Got some airbag stuff out of the inside yesterday. But this is what it looks like with the wheels on it right now. Looks awesome. I'm gonna get it lifted up. Uh, pull off all the front suspension. I just ordered uh, brand new lower control arms, upper control arms, all spherical and compliance. Uh, so I'm gonna pull all this stuff out, send everything to get powder coated. Um, I also picked up today, I got sent in a K-Series valve cover with the provision for the mechanical fuel pump. Look at that. It's nice, huh? So I got, huh? All the fuel. All the fuel. Hopefully we don't run out of fuel in this car, it's gonna have a stock motor for now, but I'm gonna get this coated, same color as the wheels. And I have the pump left over from my old car, from my hatchback, so I'm just gonna use that. guys me and Angel just got the subframe out of it um, I took the knuckles off I'm gonna have to press out the wheel bearings on both of those uh, to get the hub out to send that stuff to powder coat I'm also gonna do powder coat these factory calipers uh, just so they're nice um, I'm gonna pull this piston out and the seal because we can't have anything rubber or else it'll melt during the powder coating process so we're gonna take those two apart Get the bearings out of the knuckles. I'm not reusing that steering rack or those lower control arms or anything like that, so that's all gonna go to scrap. Uh, this, is all, this is all the stuff I'm gonna powder coat. Subframe, bracket for the uh, steering rack, both lower forks. These are the other parts of the calipers. And then these are the parts that go in between the compliance uh, bushing and the lower control arm itself. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna get this stuff apart and then I'll show you guys when I get this stuff back from powder coat and uh, get it all back on the car. That way the whole front new, the front suspension is all new. And then we'll go ahead and fix some of this wiring because it's a little ratty right now. What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost by Gear. Check out all these parts we got back from powder coat. Subframe, forks, lower suspension pieces, knuckles. And front and rear brakes. These are all going to be for the Integra. These will match. Uh, this color will match the wheels. Same thing with the brakes. Uh, I just got to get a couple wheel bearings for these. And uh, but I'm going to start assembling this tonight. Put the rack in it and get this in the car and get the lower control arms and everything on it. Uh, but first, I'm going to finish up the brake line stuff. I'll show you guys that, and then I'll show you how all this stuff goes together. All right guys, well, I was going to put the steering rack in on the subframe and get it in the car, but it turns out I don't have the right steering rack, so I'm gonna have to order one of those. I'm gonna do a manual rack out of an EG on it. Uh, that way I don't have to mess with any of the lines or anything like that. So instead, I'm gonna get these bearings into the knuckles and uh, get these ARP wheel studs in these uh, hubs right here and then get that all together. Uh, and then I can also get the uh, ball joints in these and then after I get that, we can start assembling all these suspension. We can also assemble the uh, these blower control arms with the uh, K-tuned ones. And then uh, once the rebuild kits get here for the brakes, 
we'll go ahead and rebuild these real quick and get them back on the car all right guys so i'm back out at the shop i'm gonna get the wheel bearings in these knuckles right here but first i gotta get the old races off of the uh hubs right here so what happens when you press the bearing out is this race stays on um on the hub right here so you have to get this off yeah, i usually just uh cut it diagonally with the grinder but i don't really want to score the the mounting surface here so i saw this thing on tiktok i don't know if it's gonna work but uh so to take a high heat torch um and then heat this race um and spin it at the same time so you can kind of get it heated evenly and it should technically slide off because this will expand with heat and uh and then we can get that off there nicely without uh, damaging this surface at all uh, then once i get that out i'm going to be pressing these out pressing new arps in and pressing the bearings into the knuckles themselves and then getting this all back together and then hopefully uh i'm gonna my buddy picked up a steering rack for me in denver today thank you taylor for doing that um saved me probably two or three hours of time so hopefully i can have all the front suspension done today that's my goal and I'll bring you guys along with me to show you how I do that. So yeah, let's get started. Alright guys, well it didn't really work like in the video, but I did get the race up high enough to where I can put a puller on there real quick. So I'm going to get that on there and get it off that way. Uh, I think that I need a torch that gets a lot, a lot hotter. Because uh, in the video that I saw, the race was getting red hot. So, And it would literally just fall off of this. So I think I need a better torch. But uh, yeah, I can still get it off. <laughs> I'll uh, just go ahead and... Hit it with that puller real quick and get that race off, do the other one, and then get these uh, wheel studs pressed out. All right, so heating that up definitely helped. Um, it definitely helps if you heat that up, so I would go ahead and do that. I would recommend doing that. This is the torch that I'm using. It's just a high heat. You can get it at uh, Home Depot is where I got it today. It's like 40 bucks. And then the puller, puller that I used is this OEM brand. I got it from AutoZone. Two, three jaw puller. The part number is 57011. And as you just saw, it works pretty good for doing this stuff. It actually works pretty good for doing uh, differential bearings too. So if you guys ever need to do those, uh, It'll work out for those. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these studs out of here and uh, move on to the wheel bearings. Alright guys, as you, as you just saw, I pressed out all the factory studs all at once. So what I did was I just flipped this over like this on the press, put a flat plate underneath it, and pressed right in the center of this to be able to press them all out. And then to press them in, uh, I used the plates that are on there that have two circles on them. So this one has a half moon, this one has a half moon. Creates a complete circle. Uh, that way the center of it can go down in there. And then it pretty much just sets the two uh, studs here and two here and then you press right in the center try to get it as centered as possible press down on it and it pushes them right in with ease and you can do them all at the same time you don't have to do them one by one you don't have to hit them with a hammer none of that stuff and it pressed them all in evenly all the way around on both so those look great uh, this is the part number for those if you guys are looking for wheel studs for your car so part number is 100-7711 and it looks like they're for pretty much any Honda, 1980 to 2000. So you guys can pick those up on the ARP website or from Real Street Performance. That's where I get all my parts from. 
So yeah, I'm gonna move on to the wheel bearings and the knuckles and uh, show you guys how I do that. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these set up in the in the press real quick, and then uh, um, we'll do the ball joints and stuff too. So you guys can see how that's done. All right, guys, so for the ball joints, I already got one in right here, but I'm going to show you how I do it. This is the tool that I use, also from AutoZone, OEM part number 27023. Uh, ball joint U-joint press set is what I use. So I'm going to set this up real quick right here so you can see how I do it. And uh, this makes it really nice, really easy uh, to get the ball joint in without trying to hit it with a hammer or anything like that. Uh, the ball joints that I went with are Moog uh, Steering and Suspension, the problemsolver.com is where I got them from. I also did the matching outer tie rods. Uh, they got grease circs that go on the top here so you can grease them whenever you need to. Uh, these work really, really good. Um, on the street car, comes with the uh, nut for the tie rod itself and the nut for uh, the bottom here that goes through the knuckle. These come with the ball joint itself, the snap ring that goes right here that holds this into the knuckle, the nut, and the cotter pin. And uh, I like these specifically because the boots are really good construction. The, uh, you know, it comes with all the parts you need, and it's an actual castle nut, like the factory stuff. So you can put the, uh, put the cotter pin in there and have that extra safety. A lot of these that you order... Uh, don't come with um, the lock or sorry the uh, castle nut and the cotter pin they come with the nylock nut and I just feel like they're not as safe um, nylock nuts do work pretty good uh, but I'd rather have a mechanical fastener in there you know holding that nut on just in case because if this comes off you know that's, that's bad news so uh, I'm gonna set this up real quick so you guys can see how I get this in here and uh, then uh, I usually don't put any type of grease or anything in there. These have a little bit of grease on the outside already. So you can set it in there like that. You can get it in by hand just a tiny bit. So uh, what you want to do is you'll grab this spacer right here. It comes with four different spacers. This is the one I use because it fits the nicest around it like that. So you'll want to get this spacer on here. Then you'll want to get this, uh, I guess it's a spacer as well, on there. Um, you have to pay attention though. Make sure that you get the one with the big hole. Um, that way it actually goes through uh, the end of the ball joint here because if you don't, I've definitely made this mistake before. I've used this smaller one and once you start pressing it in right there, it'll stop. It'll get caught up on there and it'll stop and then it'll just start smashing the threads on this and then your ball joint will be destroyed and you'll need to get a new one. You do have to use both of these uh, because on the end of the uh, the spit screw here, this one will go through, so you'll have to stack the other one on top of it to actually get the pressing action. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on here. It's kind of difficult to do uh, with, with one hand, but I don't have anybody to help me right now. So I'll get that on there like that. This kind of goes on that ridge right there like that. And uh, make sure it's a little centered. And then this one uh, will also go on there as well. It'll kind of center itself. So I kind of get it on there like that. Try to get this on like that. Let it rest on there. Turn it by hand so you can get it snug. I'm trying to center center it up a little bit like that. And then the top of the C, technically if this is technically a C clamp, uh, will sit on top of the ball joint. Uh, we'll sit on top of the ball joint, and that's what actually presses it into the into the uh, knuckle there. So, so yeah, I got everything pretty centered up. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the impact. As you can see there, it's, it's pushing it in. Got it all the way in, we'll back it off. Everything falls off. Move this up to the side. Okay. So, clean off a little bit of the powder coat that came out there. Uh, so, that's pretty much in all the way right there. You'll be able to tell once you can see the groove uh, all the way around the knuckle there. So you can get go ahead and get your C-clip on. Uh, same pliers that I used uh, earlier, except uh, just in the reverse fashion. So we'll go ahead and get them in these two holes right here. Kind of get it over the ball joint there. Squeeze and get the C-clip spread apart. And then I kind of do get it on there like that. And then you just press on it with a flathead. Get it down into its spot and there it went nice and seated and if you're OCD like me you'll center it just like that and that's how you get the ball joints in your integral arms so those two are all finished up for now uh, next I'm going to um, Go pick up the power steering, uh, sorry, the, I'm going to go pick up the rack and pinion from Taylor's house, help him put up uh, one of his lifts, and then we'll come back and get that on the subframe, and get the subframe in the car. <laughs> I just got back from Taylor's. Just picked up this brand new steering rack, manual rack for the car. Sort of like that. It's got a clamp that goes right here with two bolts and then two bolts right here. So I'm going to get this thing all together, get the dust boots and everything on it, and then get this thing bolted into the car. I also got some hardware from Downstar for it. So it looks nice. Not it right there. Where is it at? Ah, oh, here it is. This is the Downstar hardware I got for it. That way it matches the upper control arm nuts and the brake lines. Got those. This is a bracket that goes on it right here. Got that coated too, so it looks nice. So yeah, we're gonna get this together real quick and uh, we'll get it bolted up. put together so it's time to get it in the car uh, I'm probably gonna just try to lift it up with the jack but uh, first I'm gonna put the Hasport motor mount on here it's gonna be a little easier to get to these two bolts right here while it's out of the car so I'm gonna get that on there and then I'll go ahead and slide this under the car and get it all bolted up
just got both knuckles on, lower control arms, compliance, and everything on. These are just bolted on loose right now because I'm going to have to pull them back off to do the axles anyways. Um, outer tie rods are all on. Those are on there with cotter pins. Same thing with the upper control arms. And uh, here's another look at the finishing lines kit. Comes out of the firewall here into the brake. He sends you brand new clips and everything. The line goes into the factory spot there. Comes down around. And this is his billet plate that bolts to your factory knuckle. Real nice. And then it comes out to the banjo for the uh, brake caliper there. So both sides. Got both sides on there. I just got to find a couple bolts for uh, this line over here. But um, that's pretty much all I can do for right now. I'm waiting for the caliper rebuild kits to get here. So I can rebuild the calipers and then I can get those all on here. And then I'll probably order some some rotors uh, and some better brake pads. And then I can get all that stuff together. Uh, one thing that I am missing for the steering rack is a spacer that goes right here in between the rack and, and this plastic, this rubber piece right here. Um, I didn't know that EGs had that. Uh, this is an EG rack, so I need to get that. Um, the subframe is bolted in loosely right now with two bolts. I'm going to drop it down and get that piece in there uh, once, it, once it gets here. Um, I also left this mount loose. Uh, so when I get the motor in here, I can kind of figure out where it's going to go and then I can tighten it down. But yeah, that's what that's looking like right now. All that suspension's in there. This is all looking super good. I got the passport mounts bolted in. Two bolts here with nuts on the bottom. This is the uh, passenger side mount there from Hasport. This is uh, the hardest urethane before solid. Uh, so I don't want to go quite solid and uh, just happen to be red and match everything else. Got the struts in there. Here's the other. This is the driver's side motor mount right here with their flush mount bolts. So yeah, guys, all that's looking super good. Um, while I wait on that other stuff to come in, uh, I'm going to probably get the uh, heater core in the car and probably get the dash back in it get it looking back like a car and then uh, once that other stuff shows up i'll get this stuff all tied up 100 percent bolted on and other than that uh that's pretty much it so i'm gonna get to working on the heater core getting that back in getting the interior put back together real quick and uh we'll see what we do after that